Reserve police officer with the St. Anthony, Idaho Police Department. Uh, some people may not know that about you, but they got to learn about it on a town hall we did together not long ago. Good to see you. First of all, you know, we look at the why of all of this. And, you know, you and I have talked about the encroaching problem of problems really since the summer. Absolutely. Well, listen, it was nice to hear Mayor de Blasio say what he said. However, he should have said that from the very beginning. The police officers that I know in New York City to an officer feel like he has turned his back on them from the very beginning, and that's why they turn their back on him. Uh, he has the rhetoric and the, and the words and the, uh, the coming out of his mouth have done nothing except for encourage these sort of attacks on police officers, and it's an absolute nightmare. And, and viewers may recall on that town hall we did, we had a very large gathering of rank and file, their families, and we talked about the debilitating effects of what you say, that sort of lack of, of support, slow support for the officers, Dean, and an incredible now alarming rate of suicide, particularly Absolutely. for NYPD. I, I want us both to listen to Don Bongino. He talked about this yesterday on Fox and Friends. He says it's political. Watch. You have this liberal style of policing, which shockingly prioritizes the rights of the criminals over the rights of the people. It's really easy to understand. <clears throat> when you make it easy to be a bad guy, you're going to get more bad guys. This is only yeah. complicated to liberals running these big cities. Your reaction? Dan Bongino is 100% correct. I mean, he knows. He was a New York City police officer, Secret Service officer. I mean, th this is a man who's walked the walk 100%. He knows how that goes. When you can throw, and the president's tweet was dead on. When you can throw water, show disrespect to police officers like that, and, and even the, look at the bail reform, reform law in New York City, you know, when, when, when criminals are emboldened like that, it doesn't do anything to help the police officers. It does the exact opposite, and that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. And this isn't brand new. You look at uh, uh, Officer Familia, you look at Officer Ramos, Officer Wei Jin Liu, they were actually assassinated, and that's all part of the same anti-police rhetoric, and de Blasio and, and Cuomo are definitely a part of that problem. And so how do we solve it going forward? Well, that's a tough one. You know, maybe they should start talking the way de Blasio just spoke. If he had been speaking that way and showing respect and, 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 mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know, deference to the police officers and showing support for them. They're, the support in, in New York City police officers, NYPD, for de Blasio is at like zero, They're, like nothing. I spoke to officers this morning and the morale is horrible and the feeling is terrible. So he's got to do a lot more to support them. Doing things like fixing that bail law is a start and doing things to support the police officers is a big part of that. And, and it, unfortunately, there is politics and all that rhetoric. But de Blasio was running for president for a long time. He wasn't paying attention to his own city. And, and I've heard a lot of complaints about that. It's just it needs to change and he needs to change it. I know that St. Anthony Police Department in Idaho had brought you on. You said this is a way for your platform maybe to shine a light. You're doing it again today on those officers serving across the country. Dean Kane with us today. Thank you very much. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks, Harris. Thanks for all you do for our, our police officers and first responders. Really appreciate it. Absolutely.